All right, good morning, class. What's going on? I uh, just wanted to give you the first effort to try to do one of these screencast lectures so that I'm not talking to you so much in the uh, in our Zoom meeting. So hopefully you'll uh, you'll enjoy this method. I'll probably have to start moving to something like this going forward. And just trying to give you different ways to access the material and to keep the class running without too much hiccup and not too much boredom. So the first thing we're going over when we're looking at our graphic novel Persepolis is looking at something called the optic method of visual analysis. So optic, like many things we use in education, is a little acrostic uh, to help you remember uh, how to do something specifically. And it's going to be a good tool, in my opinion, to look at visual text. Now, obviously, the word optic means looking at something. Something that is uh, optical is something that you're looking at. Having good or bad optics means how something looks uh, in public perception. So we use this acronym or this acrostic in order to discuss what's going on when we're looking at a picture visually and trying to figure out what the author is up to and what the author is trying to tell us based on what's in the image. And um, there's many reasons that we do it this way nowadays. Um, in my opinion, the, the most important reason why we do it is because so much of the information that you ingest nowadays in 2020 and that I've been ingesting since I was your age is all visual. Um, I think I've, I've heard that expression, you've probably heard it too, that 90% of visual or communication is nonverbal, meaning it's stuff that you're seeing and, 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 and information you're picking up without it explicitly being said. So let's take a look, couple of looks at uh, some news sites that we have. Um, this one is called the Huffington Post. It's kind of a left-leaning newspaper, an online newspaper. And this is what it looks like this morning. I haven't even read any of the headlines. I just wanted you to see just how visual it is when you're looking at this news organization's website of how images are really the most prominent thing you see. Uh, yeah, obviously there's text below each of the images, but your eyes are not really drawn to the text. Your eyes are drawn instead to the images. And there's it's everywhere. How are you going to kind of figure out what's important or what you need to see? Say with National Review, it's the it's same kind of thing, only it's more from a conservative perspective. And we just scroll down and we just see that it's everywhere. Your eyes are naturally drawn to the images on the screen. It's not really drawn to the text. You have to see the image first, kind of figure out what you think about something, and then that's when you actually start reading. In our book, Persepolis, it's obviously, as you've probably noticed, it's written in a visual way. It's a graphic novel. So much of what Satrapi is going to be doing in this book has to do with her visual representations of scenes, not the actual text that's going on. In fact, I hope you've noticed already through your reading, there's very little text here. It'll make it very quick to read if you're just reading only the words. But we're going to try to get better at reading the pictures. So the way I want it to go is I want you to, when you're going through an image, is to think about these five steps when you're taking a look at uh, an image. First thing I want you to do is just give an overview of the picture, kind of just what's going on, and this can only be really one sentence, is what's happening here in the picture? What is the, the image trying to portray just on a very easy surface level? And then you're gonna start getting into the more important pieces. Then you're gonna get into the individual parts. Um, try to take the image into sections and try to break it down into like four quadrants if you can examine a picture that way and think of it almost as a, as a spot on a graph rather than just one picture. So what's going on in individual places? What's going on in the individual pieces? How are people looking? How are people standing? How are people talking to each other? What are the expressions on faces? What else is in the image besides what you're naturally drawn to? The next step is called the title. This isn't going to make a lot of um, sense in a lot of our panels. It's going to be more not for a panel in Persepolis, but more for the overall um, title of the chapter, but what is the title supposed to be telling you about the picture or the argument? How much does it add to uh, what you understand of the picture? This is more of an art um, category, but for us it's going to be, like I said, more the chapter of the the uh, graphic novel, not necessarily the, cha uh, the title of the image. This next step, in my opinion, is the most important piece, and this is what we're going to spend most of our time discussing in our um, analysis of Persepolis, and that's the interrelationships. So what's going on in the image, or sometimes we'll look at two different images side to side. What's going on between those two images? How are they related? What are they doing? What are they looking like? What are they, um, how are they connected? How are they different? Uh, what is the relationship that you have between two pieces? And then finally, 
the whole purpose of looking at an image this closely is so that eventually you can come up with a conclusion. What is the meaning of the message based on what you have viewed or what you've discussed as a group? What's the author trying to tell you in this particular picture? What's the point? What's the message here? Uh, no different than when we read a text, the author obviously has a point. So what's the point? Why is this picture in there? What is the argument of the message the author is trying to convey? So let's take a look, and this is where I want you actually typing into your notes. Uh, in the video link that I have, there is notes given. Is that for, I'm going to do this for one image, and then I'm going to have you do it for two others. And this doesn't have to take a lot of time. In fact, you're really only going to be doing uh, one or two sentences per each of these. And I don't want you to break your backs trying to look at these things closely. What I do want you to do is get in the process of looking at something that closely and going over individual steps, not just looking at a picture and going, all right, done. So here's our first image. It's from a um, very, in my opinion, very famous author named Norman Rockwell. He put a lot of his paintings in the Saturday Evening Post uh, uh, 80 some years ago, and they all try to predict kind of like a little snapshot of life. So our first thing, if we're looking at this image, is we're just looking at an overview. Overview is the first O in the optic, is just looking at overall what's happening here. And the overview can be as simple as just saying, and I'd like you to type this in, simply saying two people sitting down with a dog there too. That's all we know. Without looking at it too closely, that's just the image of what's going on, the basic overview of the situation. And then I'm going to start to look at the next part, which is P, and that's the parts of the picture. So let's look this into sections. So there's very clearly a dividing line here between this character and this character, and then this dog we'll talk about in a second. So we'll focus first on people, and then we'll focus on the stuff around. So the individual parts that we see. Well, the first parts that we see is that this man is wearing, you know, a full denim kind of work suit with a with the two hats that he's wearing. He's got a cigarette in his mouth. He's got a pocket watch right here. Um, he seems to be sitting on the the running board of a truck because you see the back tire here, and you can see the engine here and the steering wheel here. So it looks like these two people are sitting together on a truck. You see that the the younger character in here has the briefcase with a pennant that says State You, um, with three textbooks on top. You see the dog resting his head on the knee of the younger character. You see that the younger character is facing this way. You see the older character is facing this way. You see that the dog is facing this way as well. There seems to be um, some railroad ties right here in the wood with uh, railway tracks down here at the very, very bottom corner of the image. And you see a little bit of, you know, other stuff sprinkled around. There's dust and hay on the ground. There's a crate of some kind. There's an oil lantern of some kind. You just kind of see a lot of different pieces here. Now, you don't have to write down every single part. In fact, in Persepolis, her, her images are actually quite simple, but I still want you to notice all of the individual pieces, not just where your attention immediately goes, which is these three people, but instead look at everything around. So that is the, um, the individual parts. Now, the title of this is uh, Cutting Family Ties, is the name of this particular painting. It's called Cutting Family Ties. And we don't, without looking at it too closely, we don't quite know what this means yet. But we do know that if it's called Cutting Family Ties, that these two people seem to be related. So let's see how they are related and look at the interrelationships in the painting. That is the I portion. So first of all, let's look at the differences in the, in the relationship and how these two people are sitting. One, the younger kid is sitting straight up, absolutely, with his shoulders back and his, uh, his back straight, his eyes looking very excitedly towards this direction, whereas the person sitting next to him is sitting in a much different posture. He's kind of slouched over and he's looking in that direction. He is wearing very clean white pressed suit with a red accented tie and matching socks and nice brand new fresh shoelaces. He is sitting with his hands in his lap, uh, very good posture, very clean, very, uh, I mean, he looks, his suit is ridiculous, but I guess it might have been cool at the time, but uh, with a pocket square even, check him out. And he looks very um, fresh, very clean, ready to roll. Whereas the relationship, the one next to him, is it's not that way at all. He's wearing, he's got dirty, tattered, wrinkled skin, much like mine. He's uh, much more slouched. His clothes are dirty. 
His shoes are old. See, this is the young man's hat, the older man's hat with this old tattered hat. And everything just looks tired, worn, weathered, whereas everything here looks clean, new, and fresh. And our third character is this dog, who, I don't know if you have a dog. Mine actually kind of looks like this one. This dog looks very depressed, very bummed out, doesn't look very super excited like this kid does. And then also the old man's face. How are they connected? Well, they're related because... His is looking very sad, downtrodden, looking in this direction, where the young boy is very excited, looking in this direction. And we also look at some other interrelationships happening here, is that we can tell that they at least know each other very well, that we can assume that they're sitting this close to each other at a train station so that they know each other. And based on the interrelationships that I'm pointing out, they actually have the same exact nose and the same kind of jawline. I would assume, based on both the title and what I see interrelated in this image is that they are, in fact, father and son. So after I've looked at all those interrelationships and seen how they're related, I can probably come up with a conclusion, and that's the last one. Conclusion is what I'd like to think of all this stuff connected is that while this young man is very excited looking forward to his future, this older man, his dad, is looking very fondly on what was behind them in the past, of how hard he had to work in order to support this young boy who's now running off to State University. Is that I think that that's what Norman Rockwell is trying to say. It's, I don't have to be right. In fact, if I asked him, he'd probably tell me I was an idiot. But based on what I've seen from this painting, I can assume that the conclusion, the argument, is while the young are very excited to look forward to the future, our older generation is looking fondly on the past and how hard they had to work in order to get us young people, kind of, there. So here's what I'd like you to do next for your own work. So for your notes, I want you to take a look at two images. And again, don't write paragraphs for all these, just a couple of sentences. But here's the next image I'd like you to look at. And you'll probably have to pause the video in order to do your notes. Image number one is this one. Looking at the overview, I want you to look at the parts, the title, which is New in Town, and the interrelationships. And finally, what conclusions can you make from this? So pause the video now and examine this one. Again, one to two sentences per. Welcome back. Now that you've unpaused, the next one looks like this. Again, overview, parts, title, which is simply girl with black eye, interrelationships, and conclusions. So I'd like you to put these in your notes. Uh, again, you might need to pause this video right now in order to get the image going. Pause the video, do your notes, and then submit them to Neo so I can see what you got down. We'll start to do this also with Persepolis. You have one quickly to do with that, uh, um, doing a brief optic on a panel that you read uh, either today or tomorrow or this morning even. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.